Thank you. Okay, question three. A random variable x has the distribution x is uh, follows a binomial distribution with n is 12 and e is 0.85. That means, remember, 12 independent trials of, of this experiment and the probability of a success in each one is 0.85, so quite a high chance of success. Part A asks us for the probability of x being greater than 10. Um, well, we've got a couple of ways we could do this. This means the probability of x being either 11 or 12, because the only way it could be greater than 10 is it being 11 or 12. So, so we could calculate those individual probabilities, couldn't we? And that would be one way of doing it. Have we got this? There's the table. The, um, the 12, this is in the formula booklet, and the 12 <coughs> table is there. And 0.85 is one of the probabilities. So we've got a choice. We could do this one of two ways. We could use the tables, or we could calculate that. Probability of x being greater than 10. Well, if it's not greater than 10, it's less than or equal to 10. Okay, so the opposite of it being greater than 10 is it being less than or equal to 10. And the, form of the table gives us less than or equal to values. So let's take a little copy of this table that we want. If I can, if I can get that to work. So there, there's, oh, that's not good. There's my slightly out of alignment board. Come on, down, I can't do it. Right, so we're looking for 0.85. Remember, we need to find the right table first, don't we? So it's the n equals 12 table. We're looking for the 0.85 value, which is right the way along there. We're looking for x less than or equal to 10. 10 is this line here. So less than or equal to 10 is that figure which is 0.5565. So on the calculator we do 1 minus 0.5565 and it gives us 0.4435. Okay, or you could have done x being 11 plus x being 12. And the probability of x being 10, well again we've got a free choice for this, we could if we want to do this as being the probability of x being less than or equal to 10, take away the probability of x being less than or equal to 9. Maybe in this case we're just as well to say this is 12 C10, 0 0.85 to the 10 times 0.15 squared. And if we do that on the calculator it will give us the same answer. Uh, 12 C10 times 0.85 to the power of 10, times 0.15 squared. 0.15, of course, is 0.85 minus 1 minus 0.85 to give us the uh, that probability. 0.292 to three significant figures. Great. Um, next question says, find the variance of x. Again, referring to the formula booklet, we're told that for a binomial distribution, the expectation of x is np, and the variance of x is npq, or np times 1 minus p. So the variance that we're looking for is n times p times 1 minus p. And again, straight to the calculator, 12 times 0.85 times 0.15. Gives us um, 1.53 as our value for the variance. There's a part two to this question, which says a random variable y has the distribution to quarter. Two independent values of y are found. Find the probability that the sum of these two values is one. Okay. Um, so let's think. Let's think through what's going to happen with this one. We've got y, y is distributed binomially two and a quarter. Okay. What values then can y possibly take? 
what are the values that y can take? What are the Zero, one, and two. Zero, one, and two. Okay, so y could be zero, one, or two. We are choosing two outputs of y, two values of y, and the, the result, the sum of them, is one. Well, how could we make one from our two outputs of y? It could be zero and one, or it could be one and zero. That's the only way we could get one, isn't it? So from two outputs, from two values, it could be 0 plus 1 or 1 plus 0. There's only two ways that it could happen um, by those two options. So we need to work out the probability of these things happening. We need to know the probability of getting 0 and the probability of getting 1 and then working out how we can do that. So the probability of y being 0 That, that is quite an easy one to work out, isn't it? That means from our two trials, we have no successes. In other words, we have two failures. So that is 3 quarters times 3 quarters. The probability of y being 0 is 9 sixteenths. The probability of y being 1 Well, we could, we could do this, think it through, we could use the formula that we have for this. This is, uh, this is an easy thing to do, isn't it? But it's 2C1, but 2C1 is 2, times, sorry, shouldn't be an equal, that should be a times, times our one success, times our one failure <coughs> that we get, which gives us 2 times a quarter times 3 quarters, or 6 sixteenths. The probability of y being 1 is 6 sixteenths, or 3 eighths. And now we're doing, we're doing two trials of this. So we either get 0 and 1 happening, or 1 and 0 happening. So the probability is 2 times 9 sixteenths times 6 sixteenths. Which gives us two times nine sixteenths <coughs> times six sixteenths, twenty seven sixty fourths. So that's our probability. Does that make sense? The two, because it could be zero and one, or one and zero, and this is the probability that either of those happen. For a zero and a one occur. Okay, there it is. And that's maths.